Hello everyone, it is Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. I have a quick little pen review here of a, I say a dupe or a budget pen. Now this was a pen that I don't actually count towards my fountain pen number. The story behind this pen, and I'm actually going to do a review of two other Jin Hao pens, probably one next month and then one the following month. But basically the reason that I purchased this was because I have my Galen Leather wallet and then I have my passport planner in there. And when I take that out and about, I realized I don't want to be taking one of my really expensive fountain pens, for example, a Pelican M800. I don't want to be taking that out and about with me. And then somebody asked me, can I borrow your pen? That is probably one of the scariest questions you will get as a fountain pen owner and user, unless you're actually lending it to somebody who knows fountain pens. But anyway, tangent. When I discovered that I really didn't want to be out and about and possibly lose an expensive fountain pen, have someone borrow it and lose it or wreck it. I decided I needed to purchase something that I could throw in my wallet, throw in my purse, and if I lost it or if somebody else used it and wrecked it, I wouldn't be upset over it. So I went on to AliExpress and did some research on some budget pens and I know that there is a split opinion on budget pens and these dupes, but basically with my opinion on the budget pens and the dupes is that one, this for me, this allows me to be able to take a fountain pen anywhere with me without having to worry about losing it. And then two, this pens at this price point aren't claiming to be the pen that they are inspired by. They're not claiming to be a Parker 51, for example, or they're not claiming to be a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. They have yes copied the design and are inspired by the design and they're offering them at a lower price point they're not the exact same pen but it is allowing people who don't have the financial means or the accessibility to those pens to at least try one at a lower price point so i won't go into that split opinion anymore but i just wanted to show you the first pen this pen i've been using actually for a little over a month now in my sterling ink passport planner as my throw in my wallet everyday on the go pen and this is the Jin Hao 51a i purchased this off of aliexpress on december 29th and with shipping it cost about $7.32 Canadian, so very cheap. However, it did take a long time to arrive from AliExpress. So anything you order from AliExpress is going to take a few weeks. I ordered it on December 29th and it didn't arrive until about January 18th. So you can also order these, I think, from Amazon. They're gonna be a little bit more expensive, but they are quicker. So it depends on what you want to pay for. So the Jin Hao 51A is inspired by the Parker 51, except I chose this one because it has that different wood acrylic finish, which I haven't seen in Parker 51s. Now, if you're not familiar with the Parker 51, it is a snap cap, but the Jin Hao 51A is also a snap cap. And then you've got the ball clip here, which actually is a very, very good clip. And the metal cap, the resin body, and then the snap cap here to reveal the hooded nib. So this is actually reminiscent or inspired by the Parker 51. So it has that hooded nib and that's where you are going to, I guess, suck up the ink. But what also came with this for a $7 pen, it also came with the converter, which I thought was fantastic because for $7, you get a pen plus the converter. There's not many pens that are Jin Hao that include the converter with it. So on the cap as well, it says Jin Hao. So you know that it is a Jin Hao pen. It's not branded as Parker or anything. So you know that this pen really has been, let's say, yeah, 
It's a copy of a Parker 51, but it's not saying it's a Parker 51. So I have been using this actually for the last month and how am I finding it? It actually fits quite well in the hand. It is a little bit narrower than what I like. I'll show this in comparison to other pens in my collection. It's a little bit narrower than what I like, but I really only use this for short writing sessions. So really jotting something down in my passport planner. Can you post it? You can, and it backweights it a little bit with the cap, but actually it posts post to about there it posts quite deeply actually so it is very secure so if I were out and about I wouldn't have to worry about the cap just flying off somewhere if I just post it on the back really really quickly like that what I also like about this being my out and about pen is that it is easy to uncap and cap and that clip works really really well in my wallet so Going back here to my Galen leather, really easy to just put that in there and easy to take off. And for me, that's a really small but important feature to be able to take it in and out quite easily. And if you wanted to keep the cap in there, it's actually easy to take the pen out as well. So little features that are important in a budget pen for me are the ability to take it in and out quite easily. So the ink that I currently have in here is Diatramentus Document Black. I just wanted a simple black ink and it's actually worked really well. But before I do a quick writing sample, I'm gonna take out some other pens in my collection and show you what they look like in comparison to this. So here is the Jin Hao 51A and I'm gonna show you in comparison to a pen that I compare most everything with my Estherbrook SD, ooh, crooked. And then we've got the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. I'm going to take out a Pilot Kakuno so you can see it in comparison. And then a, I guess, a slightly budget pen. Not really a budget pen, but a Lamy 2000. So you can see the size comparisons here. And not counting the Jin Hao's that I've recently purchased. The most inexpensive pen that I currently have in my collection is the Pilot Kakuno. And it's not one that I take out and about with me. I like the look of the Jin Hao 51A because it, I mean, even knowing that it is a dupe, I do like the look of it. It does look classier. Now let's compare these uncapped. So uncapped the Jin Hao 51A is actually the longest pen, almost there with the Pilot Kakuno. And then in terms of the hooded nib, you can see how small that is in comparison to all the other nibs, even with the Lamy 2000 with that being the hooded nib. But it doesn't actually affect the writing performance too much being a hooded nib like that. It doesn't affect the flow or anything. I'm gonna show you a quick writing sample and give you some pros and cons to this pen. So this pen capped weighs 20 grams, 21 grams, and then uncapped, if it will stay, is 12 grams as it rolls away. So the cap itself is about 10 grams there. And it's actually not bad for that pen. If you wanted a heavier pen, the cap posted on the back like that does back weight it a little bit, but not too much. So if you like to post your pen, it is definitely postable and it doesn't seem to back weight the pen too, too much. So let's do a quick writing sample. Okay, so this here, is the Jin Hao 51A, and this is in the wood acrylic resin. And it has a fine, I believe it's a fine steel nib. And it is currently inked with the Atramentis document black and it is actually quite whoop, not bad actually for a document ink but the flow in this actually is quite good and it's very smooth considering the cost of this pen now I wasn't I wasn't sure what I was expecting from a budget Jin Hao pen. But for the cost of this pen, 
I'm actually quite impressed with it for a $7.32 pen, including shipping. Well, yes, it did take a little bit of time for it to get to me. I'm actually happy with this pen as my in my wallet on the go pen. And if anybody ever asked to borrow this pen, I'd be happy to lend it to them. And the fact that you also get a converter in this and actually a really good working nib is, I'm impressed with it. I am impressed with it. So let's do my overall, I guess, review of what my thoughts are on this. All right, so final thoughts on the Jinhao 51A. Yes, it does look like a Parker 51 dupe. And I feel like that's where most of the similarities end. I've never tried a Parker 51, so I don't have much to compare it to. What I am coming at, the viewpoint that I'm coming at this from is I needed a budget fountain pen that I wouldn't worry about wrecking, that was still a good quality pen that I could write with. And I think I found a good one here. I don't use this for long writing sessions. It literally is just jotting in appointments into my passport planner. But for that purpose, it has met its goal and it is a good writer. It is smooth and it's one, I think, for what I'm using it for, good value for money. The main con for me is that yes, it is a dupe or a copy. And when it comes to, I guess, the the overall thoughts on what I feel about Jin Hao's, I know that there is that split opinion on people who refuse to buy any of the dupes out there that really are just a, a very cheap model, but honestly, for those who aren't able to afford a Parker 51 or the more expensive pens, why should they miss out on an experience because of accessibility and price point? Not saying that this is trying to be the Parker 51 or anything like that, but if people do want a nice looking pen that writes well at a budget, I like this one. I do. I do. So let me know your thoughts down below. Have you tried any Jin Hao pens? I do have two more that I'm going to review once I've used them in my passport planner. What are your thoughts on this particular pen? Have you tried the Jin Hao 51A? And let me know your thoughts down below. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. I know it was a little bit of a haphazard review, but I really wanted to share how I have been using this and how I have felt about it. And if you are looking for a pen to just throw in your bag and not worry about it, this is a good one. All right, thank you all so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.